Welcome to our highlights of the STN database video. The purpose of this video is just to show you one or two of the key highlights that certainly scholars have been waiting for to learn about this project. We'll take you through them very quickly, um, commenting on each of them. The aim is not therefore to show you how particular functions are done, which you can learn from our educational videos that we've prepared for training people to use the database. Instead, our purpose is just to show you one or two of the key things that can be done through the database and the global results for some of those searches. First of all, we have a bestsellers table for the STN. In fact, we know that some of these works were not actually sold in large numbers, so we need to be careful. What we're really talking about is the volume of books that the STN delivered to various of its clients, sometimes to clients who brought large numbers of them on a vanity press basis, or to distribute financially themselves, or possibly to distribute as propaganda. Our top selling work on the table is not actually a bestseller at all. It's a pamphlet that grew out of a particular context in Genevan politics, a propaganda pamphlet distributed by its author, Theodor Rie, um, as part of a particular marital and political dispute um, in Geneva in the early 1780s. A number of other works on the table are produced by Louis Sebastien Mercier, one of the leading playwrights of the time. And we also have religious works, the Bible is represented there, as might have been expected, and also a number of other works ordered by their authors for dissemination. Where did all these works go? Well, the STN sold its works from Lisbon on one side of Europe right over to Moscow and St. Petersburg on the other. In the north it reached Dublin and Stockholm with its client networks, and in the south, as far south as Naples. This map shows that distribution network across the entire history of the existence of the STN. But in fact, we can also map the STN's distribution networks using this tool for the entire period or any subsection of it, down to an individual day. For one of the great things about the STN database is our ability to locate purchases and sales of books in time and space, down to very small and precise increments. One of my particular favourite features of the database is our visualisation gallery prepared by our technician Vincent Kiribaran. This visualisation gallery contains a number of visualisations of various sorts to help you understand the data and its texture a little bit better. The one shown here is a calendar with a box for each day in the STN's entire existence, colour coded according to what information we may have for that day and what source of information we used to gain that information. Because this is a database that has been drawn up by boxing and coxing, bringing together and assimilating various different sources and needs to be understood in that way as a compilation. Using this data with increments as small as a day, it is therefore possible to chart sales over time. This particular item shows sales to Switzerland in blue and France in red across the entire period. And this type of recording of sales can be done in terms of what went to individual countries, but equally we can record trends in sales to particular clients, of particular authors, of particular subject keywords across the entire period of the STN's existence. There are in the database also a large number of filters that allow us to look at smaller subsets of the data. 
These are called options menus and are particularly powerful for certain sorts of advanced data analysis. Most users probably won't want to be bothered with many of them, but this one is a particularly interesting one, our so-called markers of illegality. I've turned off those books which have none of the illegality markers that we have used in the system. You can read the options menu to understand a little bit more about these, but suffice to say, by turning off those works, I have left a rump of works which, against some measure, have a degree of illegality, certainly more than a whiff of scandal, oppositional politics, or other reasons why regimes around Europe may have decided to consider them illegal, why they might serve as contraband. The table that I have used here is drawn from the system of the Parisian booksellers, one of two systems of book categorisation that we have built into the database. It's an 18th century system that divides books into five basic categories. At the top of these sales, which have used the filter for illegality, so comprise only illegal books, we can see a belle lettre, work of literature primarily, um, and beneath them we have the category science et arts. These are the most popular categories of illegal book using this system. At this level it's quite crude, but one could go to a more detailed level of subcategories within the system to analyse how the constituent parts are made up. If we went under histoire, we could see how many works were aimed against or about Louis XV or Louis XVI, the kings of France, for example. Similarly, we've created a 20th century keyword category system, and that's one that you might to, like to explore altogether something like a thousand key words with definitions. I hope this taster of some of the highlights, uh, whistle-stop tour of the database and some of its functions will have whetted your appetite. Now you might like to go and explore it for yourselves. Perhaps you can do so by using our navigational tools intuitively. We've certainly hoped to make the system as intuitive as possible for such a complex data set. If not, you might like to use some of the instructional walkthrough videos we've created or to go to our written table of instructions about the database, both of them under the help and resources menu. Happy explorations. Goodbye.